2017, we learned something very important and some follow-up studies are starting to clarify what's going on here. So we can think of salt's effect on pathogens and it doesn't really matter what kind of pathogen it seems like at this point. Uh, we can look at it from two angles. One angle is slowing the growth and replication of a pathogen. So in, in the case of a bacterium, uh, making it a bad environment for it to grow and proliferate. In the case of a virus, it would be whatever its host is. And then there's the other method, which is, which is just physical destruction. So don't worry about slowing anything down. Make sure everything's dead. And then, of course, they can't reproduce. They can't be infectious. So in 2017, a paper came out uh, from a lab, actually just a couple doors down from ours. There are three salt labs here in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, and the mechanism that they observed in the first five minutes against influenza viruses was a very minuscule dissolution of salt in the droplet that contained the virus. So viruses are floating around. They're very rarely floating around in a completely dry state. Usually they're in some kind of uh, droplet, have a, a small liquid coating. They're, they're usually wet. And when they land on a salt surface, a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of that salt is dissolved. And as it dries, it recrystallizes with a, a sharp shredding effect on th that physically destroys uh, the virus. Now, influenza being an enveloped virus, it has, a, it has its, its inner protein wall, and then it has some, some fatty coating on the outside of it. Now, we know that uh, enveloped viruses are historically, classically, more susceptible to, infect, to disinfectants because this fatty coating is fairly easy to disrupt. Uh, you can do it with just regular old hand soap. And once it's disrupted, the virus loses its infection ability because a lot of what it needs is going on in that surface that you're disrupting. Now, fortunately, uh, the current coronavirus, and coronaviruses generally, also similarly enveloped viruses, we expect that it should have the same effect on that that it did on influenza. And that's some of the work that's ongoing now. So we've partnered up with the University of Alberta here. So we have a, we have a private lab where we do a lot of bacteria work. And then uh, we partnered with the University of Alberta to test what happens when you, when you take you know, coronavirus, put it on our surface, and then expose it to cells that it should be able to infect. What happens to those cells after it's been on a surface like this? Uh, it's underway now. We're going to be reporting it as soon as we can. And uh, we have a couple of other bits of information about how salt is affecting viruses. Uh, we have to be careful about how we think about this because in, in this question, you have to be asking, are we talking about inside the body or outside the body? Because if we're talking about inside the body, the rules change a little bit you're not going to ever fully dry out something inside the body. Now, salt is still going to have its osmotic pressure effect. It's still going to draw moisture toward it. Uh, it will always do that. Water will follow and moisture will follow, water, uh, follow salt. But it's not going to be able to dry and fully recrystallize in a shredding effect. So it's not gonna be the same destructive effect inside the body. I'm saying this speculatively. Uh, there is nothing clearly looking at that but it just doesn't make sense that that would be possible in an area that can't fully dry out. So then you have to look at this other angle of how salt interacts with pathogens, and that is uh, changing, changing how the surface of a virus, let's say, can interact with its surroundings. So there's a little bit of literature, again, around the same time, 2017-ish, about what happens when you change the environment around a virus. What happens to its infectiveness? Uh, people would take some viruses and put them on some kind of inert surface and watch what happens over time if they put it in a, in a solution with a lot of protein or if they put it in a solution with a lot of salt, uh, they would change things around like that. And there's quite a lot of impact on the, on the infectivity of a virus based on what kind of environment it's in. So that's what I imagine is probably fairly relevant to, you know, inhaled sodium chloride. It's more, not so much the recrystallization, but for outside of the body, uh, we know that sodium chloride is one of the, if not the fastest antimicrobial surface 
known today, regardless of whether you're talking about bacteria, fungus, or viruses. 